it is uh, it is humbling. It's a privilege. It's surreal. Just to be a part of this, I'm all in. I'm all in on this positive future. I'm all in that we can heal some of these rifts. And I think you saw it. You saw soon to be President Harris exhibit all those qualities and a grace that America is so hungry for. So I can't tell you. I'm just excited. I'm excited to be here. I've never felt this energy in an awful long time. Nobody's spoken to crowds bigger than me. If you look at Martin Luther King, when he uh, did his speech, his great speech, and you look at ours, same real estate, same everything, and you look at it, and you look at the picture of his crowd, my crowd, uh, we actually had more people. I had 107,000 people in New Jersey. You didn't report it. I'm so glad you asked. What did she have yesterday, 2,000 people? I have 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the crowd size. Donald Trump sees the world a little differently than us. First of all, he doesn't know the first thing about service. He doesn't have time for it because he's too busy serving himself. Again and again and again, Trump weakens our economy to strengthen his own hand. He mocks our laws. He sows chaos and division. And that's to say nothing of his record as president. He froze in the face of the COVID crisis. He drove our economy into the ground. And make no mistake, violent crime was up under Donald Trump. That's not even counting the crimes he committed. The differences could not be more apparent. Tim Walls, a former football coach turned politician, is now seeing the right-wing media ecosystem try their best to make him out to be a villain. Let's remember. One thing, don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Just do the damn work. So I got to tell you, when I see this, it lifts me up. I'm inspired. I see it. I Again, anti-Tommy Tuberville, this is the first day of football. We're all in this. We're all undefeated. We got an opportunity on this. I want to be standing in that day in November when we're playing for the big one, and I'll take us. COVID really brought it out about how bad our schools are yeah. and how bad our teachers are in the inner city. Most of them in the inner city, uh, I don't know how they got degrees, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know whether they can read and write. They want to raise. They want less time to work, less time in school. It's just we, we've ruined work ethic in this country. We, we don't work at it anymore. We, we, we push an easy life. He is the anti-Tommy Tupperville. That's a good thing, by the way. He's the anti-Donald Trump. He is nothing like these stooges. His message is one of morality. It's one of inclusivity. It's one that is well-founded through his work as a teacher. His energy his care, his integrity, uh, just a great overall human being. Uh, he's one of my favorite people in the world. You know, through high school, I, I struggle with substances. Uh, he was able to really pull me through that. There's no question in my mind I would not have finished high school without Coach Walls. You know, I was kind of on the outs as far as school is concerned. And he really pulled me aside often and really said, uh, you know, hey, Dan, let's let's give this a shot, right? Let's, let's keep coming. We need you here on the football team. Um, and I really hit had never really had a, a attention or, or care from a, from a, an adult teacher, male teacher, or a male role model at that time. So for him to take the time, a lot of time out of his day, uh, to really show me the care that I, you know, a young 16, 17 year old uh, uh, boy, you know, raised by a single mother really needed. Let's remember this interview Dan Clement gave to CNN about walls. Thus, Clement would give another interview, and it was this time to The Ringer where he said he, as in Walls, was always pumping me up. I know he wanted to give, I'm sorry, get me to be good so his team would be good, but he just gave me so much attention, even on the junior varsity team, and it made me love being around him, which has been a theme, let's be clear as well. It seems like all the students who have gone out of their way to speak up for this man has shown that he has been that dude for quite some time. When it was deeply unpopular, he had gay students' backs. He has shown leadership. He has shown how 
as a cohesive collective, we can win, whether it's in sports or in life. There's more. Jordan Ritter Khan, who works for The Ringer, would write, On the football field, Clement was violent. Off it, he was often drunk. I was a scared little kid for so long, he would say. Then I started partying. And I'm like, don't worry, Dan, life's not that bad. You don't have to be so angry anymore. Walls, it's written, tried to encourage Clement to pursue collegiate football because not only did he make all conference as a junior, but he was getting letter after letter, recruitment letters, from colleges to play. The issue, though, was off the field where he kept running into trouble over and over again. The arrests kept coming for Clement. The drinking was a constant. And going into senior year, he had to serve a suspension. So what did he decide to do? Quit. He decided to give up. He didn't want to play anymore. He would tell himself he didn't want to play anymore as well. He sort of had the mentality of, let's just get through high school. All right. Let's just get through it. Let's do minimal work. Let's pass if we can and then graduate and the cards will fall where they may. However, in those hallways, when he would pass Tim Walls, Tim would encourage him. He would say, and I quote, we need you. Thus, Clement would tell Khan, he knew I was struggling. So the governor of Minnesota would say to him, I don't care about that other stuff. From Khan, Clement heard in his voice both an invitation and a declaration that he mattered. Finally, he decided to return to the team for the second half of that 1998 season. And Clement helped deliver the Scarlets their first win over crosstown rivals Mankato East in 11 years. They went to West. Khan reports it took some time for Clement to get sober. It came about a decade later, but it was because of a friend encouraged him to join him in sobriety. He remembered what Walls said and how Walls made him feel. The caring attention he gave, the positive support can pull you through really dark times in your life, Clement would say. And when he returned to the team, Clement was telling Walls, I'm leaning on you. I'm trusting you here. I think partying is a better idea. You don't think so, and I'm going to trust you on that. And he was right, Clement said. I was wrong, and later in life when I continued to do that, when I continued to trust other people who love me, then it led my life in this beautiful direction, just like it did back then. So remember this story, all right? Remember this story of how Clement feels about Walls, the effect that Walls had on him, the encouragement, okay? Because here's what just happened. I want to turn to a writer named Jackson Thompson, who works for Rupert Murdoch at Fox News Digital. Let me just say also, look, I get it. Like, people have regular jobs. Like, I, I, I get it. And our attention spans are zapped. We could just scroll and not even think about what we just saw ever again if we choose to. Media literacy is a huge thing for me. And... I think it's very important in this day and age, even with our attention spans being close to zero, that we don't just focus on the headline because headlines can be very, very deceiving. And when I look at this, you will then understand why I feel so strongly about this because it is the purest form of deception where they are bullhorning to their audience in an attempt to character assassinate someone they don't like. So let's go. Tim Walls allegedly told high school football players struggling with crime and alcohol to keep playing. That's pretty bad. Super porous. Yet it is the angle that they thrive on. They did the same on Twitter as well. A few of the replies, he showed empathy and caring scandal. <laughs> Another ridiculous, he should have encouraged him to concentrate on his crime and booze instead. One more. Love how the right continues to struggle so much to find dirt of walls that they need to frame basically feel good stories into him encouraging drug users to play football. 
It's a bad headline. But again, it is all by design. It is intentional. Let me also say this. A line that really sticks out to me in that article, the campaign has made multiple attempts to tie the Minnesota governor's candidacy to his stint as the assistant coach of Mankato West in Minnesota in the 90s. The key word there is attempt. Are you saying it's not true? Have they tried and failed? How have they tried and failed? Are we now questioning facts? Like, the campaign has made multiple attempts. No, the campaign has told the story of a former football coach. I mean, when you attempt, there is this middle ground and push and pull of what the conclusion is of whether it was success or failure. They're attempting to do this. No, they're doing it because he did coach this team. They were state champions. I'm just, guys, I'm flabbergasted. Um, I'm flabbergasted and it enrages me because again, it is purely intentional. And he is showing Jackson here that he's just a good foot soldier in the Murdoch game. If you can and are willing, please become a paid member here at TYT Sports. And or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate it. Have a great day.